The next day, Arabella and I have barely had breakfast before a gaggle of women come to call. It seems they heard of what happened and came to get a first-hand account of the event. Unsurprisingly, Foxley calls not long after, though he has little chance to speak between the questions and excitement of our visitors. Oh, if you weren't watching the previous video, we got robbed by the Society Swindler, and it was surprisingly romantic for a robbery. Instead, he stands watch to one side, his worried gaze passing regularly over Arabella, who is in her element among society's most noble of ladies. I do my best to keep up with the flurry, though when it drags into the afternoon, I... Uh, well, I do my best to continue. I, I, I'm going to just try to be a good person and not yell at strangers for it pestering me. I do my utmost to continue as they ask to answer their questions with as much enthusiasm as I can ask, but it's rather draining. Arabella eventually steps towards me and takes my arm to pull me to my seat. Uh, please excuse us for a moment. We'll call for more tea. She leads me to one side of the room, whispering a little louder than usual to be heard over the chattering of the gathered ladies. You look quite exhausted, Catherine. Worry clings to her words. It's just the company. They are rather overwhelming after years of barely being in company at all. I do forget you are not used to town ways quite yet. We share a quiet laugh. Maybe... Her words are cut short by Johnson shuffling into the room. A uh, Mr. Amsbury. The room falls silent, or falls quiet as Mr. Amsbury strides inside. He glances over the gathered crowd. I love his hat. It is an awesome hat. He spies us in the corner. He tips his hat to the women. Good afternoon, ladies. Then he turns towards us, his smile more genuine. I hope I'm not intruding. Of course not, Mr. Amsbury. In fact, your timing is impeccable. She moves towards him, bringing me along with her, and then lowers her voice once again. I fear Catherine is a little overcome with so many guests. Maybe it would be best if she got some fresh air? A walk into town, perhaps? That would be most welcome. Then please allow me. He steps forward and offers his arm, which I am more than happy to take. Dear Bella, I cannot leave you to handle them alone. But I'm not alone. I have Johnson! Oh, I mean, Foxley! Yes, Colonel Foxley. I give a nod of understanding before being happily led away by Mr. Amsbury. There are a few people here in the center of town, and I'm thankful for the quiet and air. You're looking much brighter now, if you don't mind my saying so, Miss Bennett. I am com I am completely, most completely pleased to be out of the attentions of such overbearing company. I know how you feel, oh man. Though you and Lady Ashbourne are the cause of today's most exciting topic. Genuine concern knots his brow, and he suddenly looks away from me as he speaks. Are you all right after what happened? I'm sure... I mean, I, I heard he didn't intend to harm you. Uh, I... Oh, no. Having people jump out at me is not something I'm used to, I admit. It was all rather unexpected, I admit. People don't tend to jump out at me from the dark in the country. I'm unsure if that means the countryside is duller or safer. A little of both, maybe. <laughs> we both give a laugh and continue walking on. Thinking back on it, he seemed barely interested in stealing. I wonder what would drive someone to do such a thing. Who knows the mind of any other person? I barely know my own at times. Perhaps he's simply bored with life. And that would lead to theft? He gives a shrug and raises his brows. It would certainly stave off the melancholy that can arise from such a humdrum existence. Your life is not so humdrum and boring. You've got me to liven your life up. You liven my life up. I pause and stare up at him, examining the small smile on his face and the brightness to his eyes as he speaks. I dare say, Mr. Amsbury, you almost sound like you admire the swindler. Maybe I do in some way. Someone taking their life into their own hands and doing something daring with it. Should not even a small bit of that be inspiring? The memory of the masked man's touch against my arm sends a shiver coursing through me, but I push it forcefully from my thoughts to answer with a clear head. <sighs> I, um, let's, let's choose this one, because I have a feeling Mr. Amsbury is in fact the society swindler, so if, if I say he's a scoundrel, he's just going to get mad at me. So maybe I'll say 
Well, maybe if he wasn't messing around with other people, then he'd be nicer. Possibly it might be. If his bid for excitement did not interfere with others... He glances away in thought before he gives a nod. Yes, you're quite right. Indeed, even he cannot believe what he is doing is wholly a good idea. Amsbury looks at me in confusion, unsure of my meaning. He does skulk about in cover of night and wear a mask, after all. Indeed, I think anyone would fear the repercussions of society, or maybe their family. I frown at the sudden seriousness in his tone, but it's gone before I can think more of it. Come, let us speak of lighter topics. He's... he places his free hand on mine, wrapped in his arm, the touch making my breath catch. <gasps> oh, I do so love it when gentlemen touch my forearm. Oh, it's amazing. For a long while, I do not know what to say. His fingers on mine. Oh, man, he's wrapping his fingers against mine. Oh, we are hand-holding here. Major love. Major love here. And, uh, for once, it seems Amsbury has no words either, as entranced in the moment as I. We spend the rest of the afternoon talking on more general topics, and I never... And never once do we part as we walk. We just hold hands, going through town, talking about happy things. A pang of disappointment settles within me as we return to the house. Please pass along my good wishes to Lady Ashbourne. Of course, I know they will be kindly received. We stand before each other, neither making any sign of moving away. I wish we did not have to part. I wish that I could part my lips and press them against yours passionately. I do so love you, Catherine! <laughs> I mean, um, I could easily spend the day in your enchanting company. Your boldness continues to catch me unawares, Mr. Amsbury. But I hope not unwanted. He's blushing. Oh no, never that. And as he steps closer, his nearness captures any words I could have spoken, and is all I can do to keep from blushing too deeply. Good day, Miss Bennet. He tips his hat to me, his heavy gaze never leaving mine, and moves to walk by me. I bite my lip as his hand brushes mine when he passes. Oh, 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 man. Oh, wow. My life is so much better now. Taking a few moments longer to compose myself, I head inside with a smile. Stepping inside the foyer, I'm pleased to find that we have no more visitors. Did you have a pleasant stroll, Miss Bennet? Johnson asks as he moves to take my coat and hat. Very much so, thank you. I shrug out of my outerwear and move towards the drawing room. But I am halted in the doorway by another figure, who nearly collides into me. Miss Bennet! I did not mean to almost trample over you in my distraction. No harm done, Colonel. I'm surprised to find you here still. Yes, indeed, I, I do not mean to intrude. Is everything all right, Ernest? Whoa, they're on a first-name basis now. Hmm. Oh, Catherine! Oh, Catherine! <laughs> Sorry, that, was, that wasn't Foxley, that was Arabella. Oh, Catherine, why did you not say you had returned? Maybe you can convince Ernest that his presence is not a burden. It is not that I do not wish to stay, quite the opposite, in fact. But I did not realize the time had passed quite so quickly. Good company will do that. I suddenly wonder if it is not I who is the one intruding. Oh my, oh my. I, I'm gonna say nothing. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna interrupt their, uh, their romance scene. My romance scene was so wonderful. They can have romance as well, even though she's about to marry another man. I remain quiet, watching as the two gaze at each other for so long, I wonder if they've forgotten where they're not alone. The colonel clears his throat and straightens. Well, if it is not too presumptuous, then maybe I shall hope to see you at the assembly rooms tomorrow. Both of you, of course. A wonderful idea, colonel. Until tomorrow. With a sharp, small, with a small, sharp bow, he strides to grab his coat and cape before leaving. Arabella moves to watch him go, and I hear a small sigh escape her. <sighs> I give her a sidelong look and smile. Ernest? Well? A flush of pink settles on her cheeks, not even slightly hidden as she pushes a curl of hair from her face. He's done so much for us in such a short time, we felt it only reasonable to be on such terms. <laughs> I'm sure.